So with all the changes that has been happening in Canada when it comes to the immigration system, one of the most asked questions I've had people reach out to me and ask me about is whether Canada can temporarily pause immigration. With growing concerns and debates among Canadians, including even the immigrant community, this has become a very hot topic. Today, what I want us to do is to try and dive deep into this pressing issue, uncover what it means for newcomers and possibly some students in Canada. Stay tuned because this discussion might actually change your perspective when it comes to some of the issues that are actually happening in Canada now. First, I welcome you to the channel where I try to provide the best insights and advice to newcomers and students when it comes to moving to Canada. And as somebody who moved here a couple of years ago, what I try to do is possibly use my life as an experience to try and also show other people what they can actually do and also learn from my mistakes and also improve on their own. Today, we'll be tackling the question, can Canada temporarily pause immigration? Here is what I will try to cover in this particular video. So I will leave some timestamps in the description area so that based on what you would like to hear, you can possibly jump to those areas and listen accordingly. First, we'll try and look at what actually went wrong. Then we'll also try and look at whether Canada can actually halt immigration temporarily. Then last but not the least, we'll try and also look at potential impacts on newcomers and even students in general. Now let's dive in. First, let's understand what led to the current situation. Immigration has always been a key driver of Canada's growth. However, recent trends show some concerning figures, which has necessitated some of the at least new policies that are being introduced because what they are trying to do is as much as possible get control of the current growth and try and manage it accordingly because the current growth might not be sustainable and even people who have come into the country are even complaining that this is not the country that they actually try to move to we've had people who even came with us saying that oh when i was outside there I was looking at Canada differently and I moved here for better opportunities. But I'm getting here and I'm realizing that I'm possibly better off where I even came from because the opportunities that drew me here are actually not existent. Or even if they are existing, they are not even available to me. Immigration has indeed been a crucial factor in Canada's growth for many, many years. Here are some key points that highlight its impacts. And I'll make sure to leave a link to where I'm finding most of this information. So most of you who would like to possibly read on it can also go in there and read for yourself. Firstly, immigration has been driving labor force growth. Immigration accounts for nearly 100% of Canada's labor force growth. Because the truth is, most of these people who are coming in are actually coming to fill some of these holes that exist in the labor markets. This is essential for filling gaps in the workforce, essentially as the native population ages and birth rates decline. Because the truth is, the population is actually aging and there is a need to bring in people to close this particular age gap. Because the more youth that they bring in, the better it's going to be for the economy. That's why even if you look at things like expert century, the focus is to bring in people who are actually vibrant and much 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 younger that's why if you realize you realize that if you are younger they tend to give more points for a particular age group and the older you get you start losing points because they start punishing you for every birthday that you end up celebrating and the truth is the canadian population is also reducing when it comes to birth rates because most people are not actually giving birth they are choosing either to be single or choosing not to actually give birth, even if they decide to marry. So bringing in some of these immigrants is actually to help, for at least when it comes to labor force growth. Secondly, immigration actually is also driving the population growth. Approximately between 75 to 80% of Canada's population growth is due to immigration. By 2036, Immigrants are expected to make up up to 30% of the Canadian population. And this is something that they actually planned 
to drive because they realize that like i said in the first point they need most of these immigrants to come in to come and fill in this labor force gaps and also they need these people to come in to drive the population growth if you look at the land mass of canada it's the second largest country in the world but when it comes to population it's less than if i remember it's around 40 million now, which is less than most countries it's even less populated than the country that i even came from even though a single province in canada might be, might be bigger than a whole country that i'm actually coming from so they need people to come in to try and help cultivate and grow the population to fill all these areas thirdly immigration is also has its own economic contributions immigrants contribute significantly to various sectors including healthcare, technology and even education they bring diverse skills and innovation which are vital for the economic growth that's why even when it comes to uh, most of these immigration pathways they are not just bringing in everyone and anyone they are being selective in the kind of people that they are bringing in. if you look at the most the biggest pathways are available that's the express entry you realize that they have, have federal skill which is basically focusing on professionals then they have federal trades which is focusing on most of these artisans that they need to come in to help build the roads build the economy and help the economy run that's basically blue collar jobs then they have the canadian experience class which is basically way to keep people who are already existing in canada to stay here so immigration is one of the ways driving economic growth then fourthly there is also historical context historically canada has relied on immigration to build its population and economy for instance during the post world war ii era canada welcomed a large number of immigrants to help with reconstruction and economic expansion so you realize that even post world war canada has always been welcoming to immigrants because they saw that they would need immigrants to come in to help at least build the economy and help grow the economy then last but not the least we look at future projections by 2040 immigration is expected to account for 100 percent of canada's population growth this underscores the ongoing and future importance of immigration to the country's demographics and economic stability these points illustrate how immigration has been and continues to be a key driver of canada's growth so you realize that based on these points that i listed when it comes to canada immigration is something that is really really important because they has economic growth for them it's not just bringing in people for bringing sake they need to bring in people because it was going to help grow their economy now let's look at some numbers immigration levels have increased from about 271,000 in 2015 to a projected 500,000 in 2025 that is annually the number of unmonitored temporary residents including international students work permit holders and asylum seekers reached about 2.8 million in the first quarter of 2024 alone so you realize that this is a very huge number even though canada had plans of bringing in people this number is actually overwhelming and it's something that they need to at least sit back and look at again this group now makes up more than 6.8 percent of the canadian population this is up from 3.5 percent just two years ago so just two years ago about 3.5 percent of this population fall into this particular group and in just two years that number has actually doubled and this is just post covid so that's why you realize that there is a need to, for them to arrest this growth because it's not going to be good for everyone because besides bringing in the people they need to make sure that they have the right resources to accommodate and make sure that everybody is getting that kind of lifestyle that they wanted the main reason why they moved here canada's immigration levels have seen a significant increase over the past decade that one i'm not going to lie to you because some of us we heard about canada immigration system over a decade ago 
and we start making plans of how we want to move ourselves into this country. So immigration levels has always been there, but the levels have started to shoot beyond what they actually expect. The country has been steadily rising its immigration targets to address labor shortage, economic growth, and maintain population level. So you realize that they need to bring in people. Just 2015, Canada welcomed 271,000 new immigrants. 2021, the country set a record by admitting over 401,000 new permanent residents. Then 2025, the target is projected to reach actually 500,000 new immigrants. So you realize that they actually need to bring in people and they are making the effort to actually move people into this country. And this increase reflects Canada's commitment to leveraging immigration as a key strategy for economic and demographic growth. The government has introduced various programs and pathways to attract workers, entrepreneurs, family members to support this goal. That's why there has been multiple pathways over the last couple of years to make sure that they can find ways to bring in people. But you realize that just like what Prime Minister Justin Trudeau acknowledged, the temporary resident population growth is far beyond what Canada has been able to absorb. Similarly, even the Immigration Minister Mark Miller stated that the permanent residency should never be promised for international students, highlighting the growing strain on Canada's resources and infrastructure. Because now everybody is beginning to think that, oh, if I study in Canada, there's a direct pathway to getting to permanent residency, which was actually not really the goal. As much as you want to come here to study, they are hoping that they can maintain only the key people out of this group. But most people have taken that loophole and have become now entitled, thinking that, oh, as soon as I study, I can now stay in the country. So now let's jump to the main question here. So can Canada temporarily halt immigration? This question was notably raised in a recent interview with the opposition leader, that's Pierre Polvier on Red FM Canada. And here is a breakdown of the points that he enlisted. Because I believe that as an opposition leader who possibly might be the next prime minister, his views are going to be as important as the current prime minister. And as people who are trying to possibly move to this country, knowing what he thinks is going to go a long way to influence how you plan or possibly modify your plans that you have when it comes to moving to Canada or even staying in Canada. First, he spoke about economic impacts and said that halting immigration completely could negatively impact the Canadian economy because many sectors rely heavily on immigrant labor, especially skill trades and essential skills, which basically tells us that even if he becomes the prime minister, he believes that completely halting immigration is going to have a negative impact. Then secondly, he spoke about legal and humanitarian considerations and said that Canada has international obligations and commitments to refugees and asylum seekers, making a complete halt impractical and potentially unethical. Because when it comes to immigration, it's not just about temporary resident workers, that's international students and foreign workers. There are also the need to bring in people who possibly are here on legal or humanitarian grounds. That's people who are trying to seek asylum which also means that when it comes to legal and humanitarian grounds he believes that halting immigration in general is going to be ethical that's a second point that reinforces that he doesn't have plans of halting immigration in general then last but not the least he spoke about policy adjustments so instead of a complete pause he believes that reducing immigration targets and implementing stricter controls on temporary residents could alleviate some of these pressures. This approach has been hinted by various leaders, including Polivier and Trudeau, which means that it doesn't matter who wins the next election. As temporary residents, you should know that when it comes to immigration targets, those numbers are going to reduce. One of the days that we are going to see those big numbers 
being posted out there that Canada is trying to bring in so much people where we are seeing that they are oh they have plans of bringing about 2.4 million people the next four years or so so and so it doesn't matter who wins the next election there's going to be policy adjustments where they are going to be strict on these targets and strict on who they bring into this country and possibly most of those policies that currently exist allowing people to freely come into the country and enjoy this white north are going to be amended so it doesn't matter who wins we are going to see a big policy adjustments when it comes to some of these numbers and some of these pathways and most of these adjustments will be targeted towards making sure that it alleviates some of those pressures that they have on the current system that they have until the necessary adjustments are made in the economy for example whilst international students bring in a significant revenue through tuition fees the lack of economic opportunities post graduation has led to increased dissatisfaction among this group and we have seen students go onto the street try to protest that they came in here spent so much money but there are no opportunities for them but by controlling the influx canada can ensure that there is better integration and opportunities for those who want to come here so that they can get the cream of the crop and not just anybody and everybody coming into the country for example in 2022 alone international students contributed approximately 37.3 billion to the canadian economy through their expenditure on tuition living costs and other expenses if you're a student who is coming in you might be paying tuition fee of at least ten thousand dollars in a year if you come in you'll be forced possibly to rent the average rent will be about five hundred dollars a month that's another six thousand dollars that you are pushing into the economy when it comes to feeding you need to feed you spend if you spend another five hundred dollars in a month that's another six thousand so one single student you are bringing in at least about $22,000 into the Canadian economy. This significant amount highlights the vital role that international students play in supporting Canada's economic growth. So you have to be know that there's no way that Canada is just going to halt immigration in, in total because one, ethically it might not be good and legally for them. Secondly, they need these people in their economy one way or the other to drive economic growth and when it comes to students they are not going to stop that because they need this money that the students are bringing in so just so you know you are not going to have it either completely halted or paused but we might see policy adjustments where there might be restrictions when it comes to most of these pathways or most of these opportunities that existed in the past because they'll be trying to tighten all these loopholes to make sure that they get the best out of the best coming in so as a newcomer or a student what are some of the potential impacts that some of these things that they are going to do now so let's look at that one firstly there's going to be better opportunities because reducing the number of temporary and permanent residents can lead to more available jobs opportunities and resources for those who do immigrate here for instance international students might find it easier to secure internships and jobs if there's less competition because we've had situations where some of the jobs that some of us who came in who were managers back home are doing now you have candidates walking to you and tell you that these jobs were being done by high school students during vacation or high school students after school and now you have people who are overqualified taking up those jobs and they are doing that because those jobs that they can easily fit into either there's too much competition because there's not a lot of those out there or those jobs actually don't exist for them for them to integrate into and just today i was having a conversation with a friend of mine and i was telling that just a couple of years ago some of us were getting phone calls just to move to canada because there were jobs for us you have recruiters calling you and telling you that oh we have a job really available for you are you ready to move but now there are people here and those calls are not even coming because the demand does not exist even though their supply is so much secondly there will be quality over quantity what do i mean by 
quality over quantity a more controlled approach to immigration can ensure that newcomers are better matched with available jobs leading to higher satisfaction and retention rates this benefits both the immigrants and the canadian economy now they find themselves in a situation where a lot of people have come in because of maybe some pathways that existed that they didn't control and now these same people have found themselves on the streets complaining that they are not getting those opportunities that they were promised or they are not getting access to the necessary resources to help make their life better because they moved here for better life so they believe that by doing all this now they'll be getting quality people coming in compared to quantity then last but not the least there will be policy clarity because clearer policies and expectations can help international students and temporary workers plan better compared to the current situation that we are in where almost every other month there is a change in the policies or a change in some of the opportunities that currently exist which makes it difficult for anybody who is planning to move here or some anybody who is here to plan knowing that permanent residency is not guaranteed can push individuals to make more informed decisions about their future in canada because we have seen and spoken to people that you realize that they moved here and they don't actually have a clear pathway to get to permanent residency because in their mind they feel that it is given just move to canada and permanent residency is actually guaranteed so instead of them now sitting down to put together a plan they are counting on the system to actually get them to the end but with these new changes that possibly they might be bringing in it will help give clarity to everyone and for you the newcomer or you the student you will get, have clarity which will help you to plan better for example by setting realistic expectations international students can focus on gaining skills and experiences that are higher in demand increasing their chances of success whether they decide to stay in canada or return to their home country compared to the current situation where i think recently one of the things that i heard was that close to 70 percent of people who are coming into the country to study are either studying one form of business course or the other which is not what the economy actually needs they need people who will take up skills that are high in demand like things in the health sector stem because those are the things that are actually driving the economy and they need people in those areas so with clarity on policies as a student it will help you to have clarity on what you need to be successful in this economy so to sum it up while canada may not completely halt immigration a more controlled and strategic approach seems to be on the horizon this can benefit both the country and the newcomers by ensuring better opportunities and smoother integration if you found this video helpful give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more insights on moving and living in canada if you have any questions or topics that you like us to cover don't forget to drop it in the comment section i do want to always check my comments and respond to them and stay informed and stay proactive on this immigration journey and also don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any update check out other videos that i might have on this channel because it might be beneficial to your canadian immigration journey thanks for watching and until the next video cheers